in terms of football was a uh, you know specifically on the pitch so you, you know let's take it in detail of um of you know tactical and um you being able to to play a different role in midfield like maybe when the game changed um your technical ability became more important your ability to handle the ball became a little bit more important yeah how were you able to you know in terms of physical you've just I- explained there you're always fit like you know i've got stories here about you as a 13 year old having to choose between running and football which you, you know i can imagine at that age probably took a lot of guts but in terms of the specifics uh you know of the game how were you able to you know when i say ride that wave like when the game became more professional and the standards start to get higher mm-hmm. you were still able to get picked in every game be fit for every uh training session to go to every in- international camp go play in every international game like that it takes a lot of doing yeah and i think the technical side i was quite an honest player i knew that my technical ability wasn't as good as a lot of the players but when i went to manchester city at the age of 26 and um, we got a lot of technical work so we had a manager called nick cushion who's still one of my good friends now and he was so good at he used to always joke that would be jill touches on the ball because i'd always just want to be touching the ball and the reason for that was because i knew it was an area of my game that i had to work on so whenever there was a break say end of the season then we're going into a tournament you'd usually get two weeks off and you'd have to do fitness work i knew i couldn't be off the ball for two weeks so i used to go do extra technical um a guy called mark reese who worked in manchester he used to work at Manchester City and we used to just go and just do loads of technical sessions. So I think the reason that I could probably keep up with that level was, first of all, knowing what my restrictions were. And I know people say never put restrictions on kids and stuff like that, but I knew I was never going to be able to take on three players and, and score a top corner. So I made sure what I could do, I did very well. And I think that technical side, the only reason I could cope with the increase of the level And maybe in my last year, I started to feel it a little bit more um, at international level. I thought, like, this level is going up and up and up. Um, But the only reason I could cope with it was because I put the work in, I suppose. It's very difficult, I think. When I have podcasts with a lot of people, Jill, I'm trying to big them up and and they're sort of playing (laughs) a humble version of themselves, right? And and I think it's probably very difficult for you to sit there and and big yourself up as much as I'm trying to, but... You know, that overriding fe- feature of your personality, really, to work hard and, and to, instead of just hoping things happen, obviously going, uh, you know, off your own back and, and training behind closed doors and stuff like that. That ability that you've shown over a long period of time, obviously, to be involved so often, how was that when, because, you know, I'm 32 years old now myself, Joe, I'm getting to the latter stages of my career, and this just relentless introduction of young players into the game which I'm sure that you found, obviously, in the, the latter stages of your career. How were you able to cope with the demands of, of the game, you know, going up? Well, what specifically were you doing um, to help you be able to keep up with, obviously, the introduction of young players? I think sometimes just not listening too much to the noise around us because there is a lot of, all oh, the younger players are coming through and stuff like that. And you know what? The younger players I worked with, um, ones that spring to mind when I say that, Lauren Hemp, Chloe Kelly the most humble people you'll ever meet. Um, And I knew that they had a great talent and I knew they were going to be able to do things that I couldn't do. They had this energy and, as we touched on before, technical ability. But I think I kind of had to make sure that you hung your hat on your experiences. So it wasn't like we were competing against each other. It was just, I'll bring to the game what I bring and you bring what you can bring. And I felt like... I knew what it was as soon as I crossed over that white line I was given 100% whether it was for training whether it was for games but it is hard sometimes because you hear a lot of noise well so and so's playing well at club level and if you go into social media there'll be so much stuff I remember getting picked for England for probably the last five years of my career and if I went on Twitter the squad would be announcing it'd be like how is Jill still in there and I'd be like wait a minute I've been to I think at the time I'd been to four World Cups like three Euros at the time, two Olympics, and people are just so quick to disregard you because they see a new player coming through. But for me, I'm like, why does that always have to be a competition? If I've seen a younger midfielder come through, I've really wanted them to do well. I'd do as much as I could to help them because if it meant if they were playing better, it would then help the team. But I think social media can be quite a a nasty world really and I I feel sorry for younger players now. I was at an age where I listened to the people that mattered um, I spoke about this recently actually um, there was one game 
in the World Cup, I think it was, and someone had put Jill's legs are going, she's not really making the box anymore for a midfielder. But my role that game was actually to hold because they had two really good number 10s. Not that I was looking after both of them, just one of them. Um, and I think I learned pretty quickly, just listen to your coaches, your managers, family, friends, teammates, because people on the outside don't even know what the game plan is. And that's not me disregarding the fans. Obviously, you've got a lot of respect for them, but a lot of comments would be from people that didn't really know what we were doing that game. So younger players now do have to put up with that. We we're, we're live in this world now where people seek validation from people that you probably won't even meet in your whole life and you can kind of let one person's comments get you down and you're never going to meet that person ever. So I do think I feel very lucky that I wasn't part of that social media world from a young age because mentally I might not have been able to cope with it and I think as I got older I learned to be like believe in myself, what I can do, listen to the people around us. And I do think that was probably my kind of key to success in, in my last years. Mm -hmm.